Hello my friends and YouTube subscribers. Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another unbiased, uncut, knowledgeable video. Today is a final video out of three about my journey um, for the last one year and almost three months with my Powerwall 2. Um, the first video was about uh, how we ended up ended up buying powerwall the second video was a journey of installation and what um, happened in last year and this video will be purposely done for those who either deciding to buy one or trying to find uh, if there's a better alternative than powerwall i would just want a general information about powerwall from actual user perspective so my first thoughts is um how about say something that it's not true or hidden uh, from advertisement and what installers wouldn't tell you um, everyone knows but people are not talking about this battery degrades so especially lithium battery um, degrades and tesla also will degrade however where tesla especially powerwall to different from almost any other battery it's climate control um, the battery is liquid cooled is constantly monitored and as condition of the warranty is um, after 10 years of use if battery capacity is less than 70 percent from original capacity which is 13.5 kilowatts tesla will replace it under warranty so 70% out of 13.5 kilowatts, it's still pretty decent capacity if you think about life cycle of battery. And I think it's unlikely to fail on the year 10th on a day. So you're likely to get, I don't know, more than 10 years from the battery. So, which is, you know, peace of mind to know that battery will last for a while and will have that capacity. Another thing to know that, um, I'm not sure about other brands, uh, but one of the um, ways Tesla prevent battery from premature aging is they won't allow you to discharge the battery uh, to 100% discharge or to zero. You can configure uh, battery discharge up to 5%, so it's 95% of capacity available to you that basically means that it's five percent less capacity than what they advertise on the paper i'm not sure how it is important but i think it's important to take in consideration if, especially when you're trying to go um off grid um another one was a little bit surprised for me um i don't like going into little details and nitty-gritty of um, um sense but I was quite surprised that the sensing mechanism of consumption and fit in uh, cannot sense flow of electrons 100%. That means there will be some moment when in the morning sun rises and your solar start working and supplies little electricity and battery still supplies to the grid it will be loss of power that basically it will be lost kind of in translation of that sensor and you consume power from the grid unless you disconnect battery completely from a grid so i would call it some tolerance of sensing flow of electrons but still uh, it results approximately in uh, 0.1 to 0.3 kilowatts a day of electricity being drawn from a grid even though battery has capacity to supply um, uh, to your place another one is a big one that no one really thinks but um, majority of us would create an environment when your battery is connected to non-hybrid inverter that means every time that you invert power from DC to AC to DC you will lose um, some power to heat and conversion and all of that so i'll call it a round trip so if you think about this your panels on the roof 
uh, working on DC and then they send electricity to an uh, inverter that converts it to AC and your battery is DC again and within a Tesla power there's inverter as well that, that converts from AC back to DC so you've got triple conversion one way in and when you got um, back feed in you've got basically six conversions when in my calculations you basically have loss of around 15 percent of electricity for conversion purposes or put in electricity terms if your solar generated um, 10 kilowatts of power and you send electricity both ways 1.5 kilowatts will be lost in inversion from ac to dc to ac to dc and so on so um it's a big deal in my books but you know electricity from sun it's free i just don't like to make those losses you cannot avoid them i think you can minimize them if your inverter is hybrid that basically can uh, somehow bypass one of the stages I'm not sure if Tesla would allow that because they fit in in Australia only um, AC which basically forces you to do that conversion next one is um, uh, power comes with 3G SIM however uh, a year ago Tesla made Wi-Fi connection um, to internet compulsory so it comes with 3G and Wi-Fi module and you actually, they commit you uh, to connect Wi-Fi uh, to the internet. And if you don't, basically um, you void the warranty. It's one of the uh, things that I think there would be in a small print, but it's pretty upsetting if you invested all that money. And I'm not sure if many people are still without internet connection. Uh, but if you're in position not to have internet and also you're in 3G black spot or just don't have internet connection, I think you need to communicate with Tesla if it's your choice of the battery and let them know that um, how you go about it because you don't want to end up with expensive product and no warranty. Another thing that I learned is uh, Tesla support. I had only two hiccups which was one fault and by the way that fault wasn't tesla related it wasn't tesla equipment but it's not uh in the sense of um uh tesla fault please have a look uh my second part of the tesla video i put both parts links on uh in the description uh so uh i describe it in the second part what happened there and i basically show where it is but what happened is the uh, Tesla support when they encounter a little bit challenging situation I felt that they're not communicating back that means they decide that fault is not theirs um, but the communication back the feedback to keep customer engaged it's something that I think they need to um, uh, work on um, next one is everyone asking me why did i buy battery when i expect to get my money back honestly i did not buy battery to get my money back solar with subsidies solar um, uh, panels and inverter great way to get your money back in uh, three four five years depends on the system um, battery is totally different approach so before Tesla battery, we had a number of um, small UPS, which is uh, uninterrupted power supply systems around the house to supply power uninterrupted to modems, to uh, equipment that basically we need to be powered. And uh, the battery there lasted between one to three years. And every time I had to buy, capacity was pretty small. Every time I had to buy it between uh, one to two hundred dollars, it was a bit of hassle. And I decided, look, um, in the summer would be nice running the air conditioner. Um, when everyone loses power, it would be still nice to watch TV and things like that. So it would for lifestyle perspective, but consideration was not to make loss. So we did calculations and um, in our case, with all subsidies that we got from Queensland government, 
it depends on uh, how sunny it will be next uh, five ten summers uh, the payback would be uh, between six to eight years and if um, warranty for Tesla battery is 10 years we at least got uh, two years of free battery and I don't believe it will fail exactly after 10 years so uh, look we've got free UPS for uh, more than two years uh, after we finish paying for the battery and by the way the benefits are already tremendous we we had uh, in my second video I said I had no idea we had power outage one of the storms in Brisbane of three hours 27 minutes I just realized it because um, uh, it was a log and application told me that uh, uh, last backup was 3 hours 27 minutes and then spoken to my neighbor the lost power uh, the, the food spoil in the fridge or because it got all this soggy and all but not really rotten but still and we sleep well we had air conditioner um, we had no idea it was outage so that's one of those considerations that you need to think when you do payback is it all about money i think it's not all about money um some things you cannot buy uh some things we do for convenience and uh yes we expect profit on the battery but we did not buy for that purpose another point i would like to make um tesla application monitoring uh if you if you ever buy a tesla car or tesla battery uh be careful with that one it's seriously addictive. I'm not sure who designed it. They've got absolutely brilliant minds. I cannot begin to describe how good application design is, how much useful information it gives you, how much visualization you got, how much statistics you got, how much all information that you basically need that you would ever wish to be designed in a convenient way. It's in one application, it always works absolutely unbelievable well done tesla so i would like to conclude uh, all three videos in one conclusion would i buy tesla battery at full price plus installation cost if that subsidy that we received from queensland government would be taken away if it couldn't take uh, uh, interest free setup free uh, loan from Queensland government, I wouldn't get battery. Look, it's quite big out of pocket expense. Even though when we bought it, um, the, the battery cost twelve and a half thousand dollars without subsidy. Um, sounds like you know you can break even within ten years. It's still you need to fork that money up front. And look, we're not rich family. We don't have that money in the pocket. So the answer is no subsidies. I wouldn't buy. However any subsidy that would be placed on top of the price that we paid i probably would buy i'm not i'm not sure if that would be only if they say hey we won't give you any free money but we'll give you a loan of half of the amount or 75 percent amount i would go for it but look they gave us three thousand dollars um as battery subsidy they gave us six thousand dollars as um uh, loan that we pay fifty dollars a month, which basically we recoup that money in electricity costs. So it really doesn't cost me any money. We were out of pocket three and a half thousand dollars to guarantee electricity supply for next ten plus years. I think we had a pretty good deal. I'm not sure what prices are right now. I'm not sure what conditions are. Maybe there are batteries, better batteries in the market. There's a lot of point of consideration, but the, my conclusion is subsidy. Tesla warranty and in my experience, yes, I would buy it again. Um, another point um, I would like to make, um, you do have choice with Tesla Powerwall 2 of uh, gateway device. Gateway device is uh, what I describe as a battery's brain. Um, so at the moment when we bought our battery, gateway was version one and version two. If you buy multiple Tesla Powerwall to batteries. Seriously, consider uh, Gateway version two. There's a better management. There's a better communication and things like that. And by the way, um, Gateway two from my memory um, looks like a small uh, Tesla Powerwall two, which is quite cute. Whereas uh, uh, version one looks like just normal gray box of um, I don't know, uh, like meter box, uh, which is not pretty, not ugly, but not pretty. So 
think when you buy if you if you buy a new device and if you think that you end up with one power wall you still got option for version one look not worth spending money version one works quite well there's nothing wrong with uh, getaway version one however just remember version two still uh, available could be a little bit more expensive but that's a point for um, consideration another one people will say uh, regardless of the cost and everything with my experience would I recommend Tesla Powerwall 2 after almost a year and a half of usage? Yes. There's no one moment that I say, you know what, I feel like um, I'm early adopter. It's a gimmick. It doesn't work. Seriously, guys, uh, it consumes 5 kilowatts at uh, steady pace. It can give you up to 5 kilowatts at steady pace. And if your solar generates, let's say, 5 kilowatts, uh, and your battery can get uh, uh, five kilowatts. You may consume at single point in time ten kilowatts of power without touching the grid. I think it's just phenomenal. Not many batteries, if not any of them, can give you the same currently in the market for that price, or any of them at all, which is a really big plus. I think Tesla done that point of differentiation quite well and yes i would recommend it um uh, to anyone who ask and seriously it's not that i would recommend you have to buy one only buy if you can afford it but i'm pretty sure guys if you if you buy the battery you won't regret it it's a product that on the market i think more than four years now now it's well polished product now it's proven and you know still pretty high demand for them so um, that basically concludes uh, part three of uh, and final part of my Tesla Powerwall experience. Please comment down below. Uh, I may create another video about my uh, entire solar system, maybe some uh, statistics and graphs. Uh, but for now, I would like to finish it. And um, as a token of appreciation, can you please subscribe to my channel, hit like, and subscribe to notifications to all my new videos. Um, it is quite uh, time consuming to make new videos and um, I would appreciate if you give me some support and feedback so I can improve and create new videos that you guys want to hear about. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.